sex used to be a very big deal to me. I never had it in high school because I knew I wasn't ready and I wanted my first time to be special. When I did finally have it, I was a freshman in college and lost my virginity to my boyfriend, a super senior who I thought I was in love with. By the time I was 25, I had only had sex with four people, three of whom were serious boyfriends and one hookup. The hookup happened in the midst of one of my many, many breakups with my on-again, off-again boyfriend with a guy I knew through mutual friends. It was awful, awkward, and so uncomfortable. He was really skinny, skinnier than any of my boyfriends. I thought he looked hot, but once he was grinding up against me, I realized the skin and bones just wasn't for me. I needed meat, muscle, flesh in between us. I also felt very large next to his small frame and not sexy at all. The worst part was once it was finally over, we eventually agreed to stop because clearly neither of us was enjoying it. He wouldn't let me leave. Stay, he pleaded, spend the night. I really didn't want to mostly because I had contacts in and I hate sleeping in them, but also because I was living with my parents at the time and I didn't want to have to explain where I was all night. Plus, I really, really had to pee. But he held me close to him, enclosing his arms and leg around me, spoon style. I had to wait for him to fall asleep to pry his sweaty limbs off of me and sneak out. His experience really turned me off to casual sex. So, just a month before my 26th birthday, I ended a serious relationship and found myself single, in grad school, in the middle of nowhere, Connecticut, and heartbroken. I knew another relationship wasn't what I needed, but the thought of not having sex again for months or years until I found another special someone freaked me out. I didn't want to wait that long, but I was scared and nervous about putting myself in another possibly terrible situation. So I did what any other sensible girl would do. I consulted my friends. At this point in time, they were the three other women in my grad class, all of whom I had met just weeks before. Since they didn't know me at all, they encouraged me to try casual sex anyway. They assured me not all experiences would be that bad, and I was bound to have some fun. So I did. Didn't really take much convincing. <laughs> First with an 18-year-old sophomore. Next with a 20-year-old, the sophomore's friend. Then some Tinder boys. Very, very few people I met in real life. And more Tinder boys. <laughs> Most were under the age of 22, but hey, I was attending school surrounded by college boys, so it was bound to happen. Most followed the typical cycle of a few dates, sex once, maybe twice, and then never talking again. And some were actually really nice guys I developed feelings for, who then either didn't feel the same way back or lived in California and also didn't feel the same way back. That one actually happened twice. Now, all of this happened over the course of about a year and a half. And because it was all happening so quickly, I started to lose count. I'd have to go back in my head and rename all the men I had sex with in order to remember, and each time I did, I'd forget one and then have to go back. Why was the number so important to me? Well, because I was the girl who waited to be in love, to have sex who for so long only had sex while in committed relationships. And even though I wasn't that girl anymore, the number still meant I was a good, wholesome person, at least in my own mind. There was a time when I thought I'd never reach 10. I figured I'd be married before I had sex with 10 different people. But then I hit 10 rather quickly. <laughs> so the next number was going to be 20. Surely I'd meet the man I was going to marry by number 20. 
But then one night, I was making out with this guy from my high school gym class I had recently reconnected to, thanks to Tinder. <laughs> and things were getting really hot and heavy, and sex was clearly the next step, but I stopped it. I didn't tell him the reason at the time, but I couldn't remember my number, and I needed to make sure I wasn't going to hit 20. Later on, Late at night, when I couldn't sleep, I decided to compile a list of all the men once and for all so I could stop questioning myself all the time. But of course, this is the social media age, so my list wasn't a document of names. It was a document of pictures I had found while stalking these guys on Facebook. And there they were, staring me in the face. All the men I had ever fucked all white, mostly with brown hair, all 19 of them. So high school gym class boy would have been number 20. And part of me was relieved that I hadn't done it. My goal of marriage by number 20 might still come true. But then I started to really look at the list and I wanted to take someone off. This was a man who sexually assaulted me. Okay, he raped me, but that word is hard to say, so I used sexually assault, and I didn't want him on my list, even though he technically belonged there. I'd had consensual, consensual sex with him before the night I was blackout drunk and woke up to him inside of me, but I hated seeing his face among all these other men I had soberly chosen to sleep with. Then I looked at some of the other men on the list who definitely entered inside of me, but only for a few seconds and neither of us came. Does that count? I don't know. I guess it counted at the time it happened because I wanted it to count. I wanted to feel like a liberated, free, independent, casual, sex-having woman. But I didn't count that boy in college who shoved himself inside of me without my consent because I quickly pushed him off of me. I didn't count that at all. I tried to forget it because was that rape? Was it sexual assault? Was it anything? I didn't count it as anything. I didn't think about it at all. And what about hot high school gym class boy? We didn't have intercourse, but we did pretty much everything else that night. And there have been others like that. Is that sex? So that's when I realized, who cares? What does that number mean anyway? Sexual experiences either mean too much or mean too little to be reduced to a number. I want to forget about the sex I want to forget about and I want to remember and relish in the sex I enjoyed. And I'm going to. And the number, well, I'm going to hide that away in the back of my mind and go back to that blissful time when I couldn't remember. Because who really cares, anyway? I remember one of my college professors once told me never to ask a man how many sexual partners he's had. Well, let's not ask women, either. Let's not even ask ourselves.